The very, very many distinguished guests that we have here today. Welcome to uh, Parliament. It's my pleasure to welcome you all for uh, the celebration of uh, Europe Day. Uh, I, uh, I suppose a year ago, took over the vacant uh, chair of the NZEU Parliamentary Friendship Group. Uh, I just wanted to welcome you all and uh, uh, thank you for coming and introduce Peter Kennedy here to be an MC for the evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paul Goldsmith, uh, for introducing uh, this event and also thank you for hosting it here in uh, Parliament. Good evening, everyone. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. The European Parliament elections this year are significant for a number of reasons, uh, not least being that this year is also the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the First World War. A war that cost the lives of millions on uh, both sides and also uh, it, it cost the lives and injuries of one quarter of the adult male population of New Zealand. That in itself should be reason enough for New Zealand and New Zealanders to be interested in the evolution of Europe. But it took a second world war in which many Kiwis, Māori and Pākehā, again served and died before two great warring nations, France and Germany, determined that sharing resources rather than fighting over them held for their people a better future. The European Parliament became the only directly elected institution of this wonderful and unique experiment even if the absurdity and the expense of moving the whole shebang between Brussels and Strasbourg once a month still exists to this day. We, we are most fortunate in having here this evening a number of distinguished academics and diplomats, each of whom is able to give us an inside view of how the European Parliament has coped with increased powers over time, what different member states might think of it, and what the future may hold. It's my very great pleasure to begin the process by inviting my old friend, Professor Martin Holland of the EU Census Network to talk to you. Thank you very much, Peter. It's, it's good that you use the word old, because that's really my first point. I am indeed uh, old enough to remember the first direct elections uh, to the European Parliament in 1979. And indeed, uh, I'm prepared to confess I voted in them, and that might be a unique thing in this room. Uh, and I voted in the United Kingdom version of that. And even more so, I would not be here today if it was not for those elections, because that was the topic of my PhD. For, which I studied for three and a half years on the uh, 79 elections. The only one, I believe, ever written in the English language. Uh, allow, allow you to draw your conclusions. But of course, it puts me in a very good uh, position to reflect back, what was it like in 1979? Um, and I have a very strong memory of the great disappointment of the turnout at 62%. Uh, which um, has proved to be the peak uh, in the last 35 years. And as we probably all know, the last elections, it was as low as uh, 43%. But also in 79, these were different times. The UK had just had a referendum, and two-thirds of the population voted uh, to accept the terms of membership. It was pre-Mrs. Uh, Thatcher, it was pre-Bruges Group, pre-UKIP. Um, so it was really a very different context. Although one thing probably has changed, if for the better, I think. I also remember on the election day in 1979, which was the 7th of June in the UK, only two national dailies in the UK mentioned there was an election taking place. That's quite unusual, I would suggest. Again, as uh, Peter's hinted already in his introduction, uh, since 79, you could say the elections have been in free fall, with fewer and fewer people voting at each election. And that we are now faced with this paradox that under the Lisbon Treaty of 2009, we have a European Parliament uh, that is a co-equal. It's a real legislative body with authority, whereas in 79, it was mu not much more than an advisory uh, chamber. And that body now really does affect everyday life of, of citizens in Europe. 
Perhaps the most important thing uh, for everyday life is uh, trying to reduce roaming fees uh, for mobile phones, European Parliament initiative. We'll see whether that's sufficient uh, to increase uh, turnout. Uh, but in this coming election, it certainly we have for the very first time um, some more well-known candidates standing across many, many countries. Indeed, six former members of the European Commission, the policy-making uh, collective, are standing as members of the European Parliament. Some of you may have also followed the various political groups in the Parliament have nominated uh, their preferred candidates for presidency roles of the Commission. First time this has happened, we've even had live televised debates uh, put on by the same company that runs the Eurovision Song Contest, and they think it should be as successful. I'm not so sure. And you might think this is slightly odd coming from me. We have the success of uh, Euroscepticism. I mean success in the sense, for the very first time, I think the nature of European integration is part of the mainstream debate of the elections. People are being asked to think about that, and that's not really been the case before. I only have uh, five minutes, I believe, which is why I've taken my glasses off, so I can't see the clock. Um, but this, I'm sure my colleagues here on this panel will talk about this great opportunity in 2014 uh, to renew the institutions, because first of all, we have the European Parliament, a new political group, a new president of the European Parliament, but we'll also later this year have a new president of the Commission, of the Council, and a new high representative. So the real top level of EU leadership is for renewal. And this really gives the EU a great opportunity um, to live up to the challenge of the Nobel Peace Prize, which was awarded 18 months ago. Some of you, I think, were in this room when we celebrated that. So it is a great uh, opportunity uh, for the dialogue and the debate about the EU uh, to really take a new direction in 2014. Yes, I'm an optimist, um, but I think it is a very important year and I look forward to the results which will be announced on uh, the 26th of May, uh, so only in less than three weeks. Is that five minutes, Mr Chairman? Thank you very much.